So we've already kind of inadvertently seen when we have equations that have parentheses in them, when we multiply both sides of the equation by some number, either the LCD or a factor of 10. Um, so we've already kind of covered distribution and distributing over parentheses, but if we do have them, again, we'll just ha have a little quick review. If I do have parentheses, I need to distribute whatever is out on the front to the inside to get rid of it. So 2 times 2x will give me 4x, 2 times 3 will give me 6, then we just proceed as normal. So get rid of the parentheses in the first, first place. So I need to subtract 6 from both sides, I'll be left with 8, divide by 4, x is equal to 2. We can check, plug it in, make sure that it actually works, it does, so my solution set contains 2. So in an equation that has parentheses, um, we need to take care of those. So general equation solving guideline, multiply on both sides to clear fractions or decimals like we've just seen. Multiply to remo remove parentheses in both cases. Collect like terms if you need to, isolate the variable, then multiply or divide by whatever constant is out on the front of your variable to isolate the thing and get it on its own. Okay, we got those. So one other thing we want to look at, this first example, might be kind of stupid to think about right now because it's very plain that this side is exactly the same as this side. But sometimes it might not be so evident. They might have different forms, but still be exactly equal, the left and the right. So let's just plug in some values for x just to see what happens. So if I plug in x equal to 1 into this equation, what do I get out? 4 equals 4. If I plug in x equal to 2, I get out 5 equals 5. If I plug in anything, really, if I want to plug in a 10. 13 equals 13. And what do you notice about every single one of those equivalent equations? They're always true. 5 always equals 5. 13 always equals 13. 4 always equals 4. Seems kind of redundant. So now let's solve this equation using the addition principle. So this, this is evaluating for specific values of x. We want to be able to solve it generically and show that it works for any x we're going to plug in. So let's just pretend that we're trying to get our x's together on the same side. So I'm going to subtract x from this side. What I do to one, I have to do to the other. What am I left with? 3 is equal to 3. A statement again, that's always true. Or... Let's say you took that equation and started first by trying to get your constants together. If I subtract 3 from this side, I have to do the same over here. So I'm left with x is equal to x. Another statement, again, that's always true. So, we end with a true statement. So, the original equation holds for all real numbers, regardless of what x I plug in, like we saw before. The statement is always true. So, it holds for all real numbers. So, how many solutions do I have to this guy, to a problem like this? A statement that's always true, doesn't matter when I plug in for x, so I have infinitely many solutions that I can plug in. Positive, negative, zero, fractions, decimals, anything will work as long as it is a real number. So looking at the next example, 3 plus x equals x plus 8. Let's plug in some values there. 4, x equal to 0, what do I get? 3 is equal to 8. Well, that's never true, at least not in this dimension. x equal to 1. 4 equals 9. Also not true. x equal to minus 2. I could throw a negative in there. I get 1 is equal to 6. Never true. So again, we're plugging in specific x values. We want to show generically, regardless of what we plug in, this is never going to hold. I can never make 8 equal to 3. So let's do just that. Taking my equation, 
let's say I am trying to move x from this side to the other. Subtract x, subtract x. 3 is equal to 8. Never true. Not going to happen. Okay. So, we end with a false statement, something that is never true. So, we end with a false statement. So, the original equation is false for all real numbers. We don't have any solutions, any x values that will make this equation true. So, again, next blank, all real numbers. Doesn't matter what I plug in, I don't have any solutions. Okay, so take those last two tries, solve them, talk about their solutions. It's not as evident when they're a little bit more complicated. So in that first example, we have two groupings of parentheses that we need to take care of. So we need to distribute to get rid of them. So I've got 3x plus 6. Don't forget to add one. He's still tagging along. He just wasn't on the inside of the parentheses. And on the right, if I distribute, 3x plus 12. So maybe you might be able to tell what's going to happen, but let's just continue as if we don't. I'm going to combine my like terms on the left. I've got seven constants all together. And you can see they don't match exactly. But again, if you can't see it, let's just continue as if we're trying to solve for x. I want to get my x's together, so I'm going to move this one to the other side. Whatever I do to one side, I have to do to the other. So I'm left with 7 equal to 12. That's never true. So what about my solutions for this equation? I don't have any. No solutions. There's no number that I can plug in that will make that true. At the second one, what happened there? Again, we still have parentheses. We need to distribute and get rid of those. And once we do that, we'll combine our like terms. 4 and 3 together gives me 7. What do you notice? Exactly the same on the left, exactly the same on the right. If you don't see it, just keep moving along like you're trying to isolate. I'm going to move 2x to this side. I'm left with 7 equals 7. Something that's always true. So, what kind of solutions do I have for this guy? Infinitely many. I can plug in any number for x that I want that's real, and the equation will hold true. So, since this is always true, we have infinitely many solutions. So as you're solving equations, these funny cases might come up. You need to be able to handle them both.